Thank you, Vinod and Sridhar, for asking me to participate in this uh, series of uh, outreach programs that you are doing. This is also, I think, a part of the uh, Science Day and the Science Week, the festival that India is celebrating in, seven, in honor of the 75 years of independence. Today, I've been asked to talk about future of dynamics. You know, if you want to talk about the future, it's important that you look at the present in the context of the past. So I will take you back 30 years and say when the genome sequencing was started, the world got divided into two groups. One set of people who believed that genomics will be a panacea, it will change everything, it will solve all the problems and all the diseases. And people like me who believed that Genomics will be very important for India 30 years later for preventive health care. And whereas there was a group who felt that this is a pure waste of money uh, doing technological research, it has no biological or functional meaning. No wonder that the in Indian scientific leadership, barring a few, actually fell into the second category. So my being a member of the Human Genome Organization from 1990 and have the privilege of seeing the birth of the genome and in interacting with Charles Cantor and Andrew Mitzabeka from since 85, I was very clear that India will need genomics. Not only India will need genomics, it will need multiple institutes who will do, and hundreds of scientists and thousands of researchers who actually can make, will make a difference for the people of India 30 years down the road. That was my vision of 90s. So that led to my moving to Delhi and establishing Institute of Genomics. So you can see today, the pandemic has demonstrated that how important it was to build the capacity and the infrastructure, not only to do diagnostics, but genomic surveillance. Complete new uh, epidemiology was done in genomic surveillance. And India didn't need technological support from anybody. India could do all by itself. And therefore, if I ask, if somebody asks me today, how do you see genomics in 2030, 2050? And where is the science going? I'd say I divide into two categories. One is where you will have technological developments and application. There'll be, as we, you know that the large number of data got generated from multidimensional omics, from proteomics, from metabolomics, from genomics, genome sequences, variations, then microbiome data, microbiome data. So I think this data management and integration will be one of the biggest technological challenge. Along with layered with uh, personal data exercise, all these digital data that we will generate along with medical records will be the first phase of challenge. And this will need beyond human. It will need artificial intelligence. It will need completely new algorithm. It will need a data structuring, which is not what we can perceive today. I believe that you will create a new data structure by which the expansion of data will not make limitation of creating another new sets of data structure. So it's like 
a watermelon, small watermelon grows and grows and grows. So data structuring will be similar to that pattern that you should be able to grow data continuously without rechanging the data structure. So these are the challenges. The, according to me, functional food will become the most important because we'll know the genomics, we'll know all the metabolomics, we'll know, we'll know which components of it will be responsible for. So therefore, drugs pharmaceutical will start shifting and healthcare will move from curative medicine to preventive and predictive medicine. Now, will it make our life simple? Answer is yes, because for 1.3 billion people, government cannot afford for chronic diseases and various diseases treatment. We spend only about $36 billion, including out-of-pocket expenses in this country, which accounts for about $30 per year per person. It is impossible to provide curative healthcare. So no wonder the government has taken initiative to wellness. So wellness genomics is the future. You would like to know why somebody is well when other is not. Why somebody got COVID, why others didn't. Why somebody got multiple time COVID and others didn't. And this sort of uh, knowledge will lead to it. This can only be done if scientists, younger scientists today build cohorts, build all possible cohorts. And all those cohorts will be the backbone by on which you can then do. And I'm sure, I'm glad that Institute of Genomics has already built several cohorts. Now this will allow us to not only solve rare diseases, identification, discovery, and actual hypnosis. We'll have CRISPR-based technology, cells, it's engineering of cells, which will be able to replace. And it's in, I hope soon there will be a cell therapy engineered cell therapy for Alzheimer and other diseases. But what would be, that would be a very expensive activity and it will not reach a billion people. It will benefit a million, 10 million, 100 million. So my approach will be that I believe that if you take cohorts and figure it out, why somebody gets uh, Alzheimer, whereas dementia, early onset, where the late onset others don't. What is that behavioral pattern that will change? So, which means suddenly we have to go back to the drawing board. That means we have to come back to understanding fundamentals of biology using the knowledge that we have generated. It was simple. You have a one gene knockout, you have a disease onset. Now you have multiple gene, multiple variations, you have a disease onset. A, a compensatory mutation in another chromosome reduces the risk of the disease. So how will we understand this one gene with multiple function? That I think will be the challenge. Genomics today is one gene, one function is reasonably understood, but one gene with multiple function will be the future to understand. And once we understand that, our next step will be how are the two subunits of protein gets created and where is the coordination between chromosomes in coordinated gene expression? You know, system is very complex. Biological system is very complex. How is this complex system operates? As we individual variability connecting to our lifestyle, all this will get then integrated, and that's where the future of the genomics will be. Behavioral genetics will be upheaval. There'll be a huge amount of behavioral genetics should be start. Then we'll start realizing that the way we behave, why somebody is introvert and why somebody is not, why a girl and a flower and music make somebody very happy, others just become indifferent. The problem is once we identify genetic basis of it, and the consequence of epigenetic impact on those, well, our jurisprudential will need a new structure. Then people start arguing that I have this genetic predisposition, so I cannot, I do this because I did this way. So, so I think law has to understand and undergo some changes. 
The last frontier will be brain mapping. When brain mapping of individuals variability will lead to their genomic structure, all these put together, will then have a severe consequences of complexity of understanding how we respond to external stimuli. I'm sure corporate world will utilize this to uh, individual focused advertisement. Corporate world will utilize this to see how not only personalized treatment pattern, in addition to there will be complete new way world will look at data. So I will suggest that one of the things that India can do is that a fundamental interaction to understand with diversity that we have, how genomics, how genome sequence actually controls anatomy. Why some people arteries are thin, some are not. And that create even 80% blockage of a 3.2 mm bigger artery may have a less impact than a thinner artery, which most of the Indians have. So we haven't connected to the anatomy. So genomics and anatomy will be the new frontiers of biology, which eventually bring, I'm sure, uh, such fundamental discoveries that which will be then will be eligible for uh, a Nobel Prize. So in my words, in my belief, India with its genomic diversity in the population, with its capability in a very leadership capability in artificial intelligence, actually we should start getting integrated institutional structure, both virtual and real, where we can bring different expertise to handle this challenge of the future in both understanding fundamentals of biology in application of genomics and take these applications of those knowledge in solving day-to-day -day problem, not only for healthcare, but also in agriculture and other sources. The, we have moved from genome sequencing to genome writing. And I think the next challenge, already we have written a genome of the messenger and a vaccine. You have seen at what speed the synthetic biology has grown. So genomics of tomorrow will be engineered bacteria to do industrial work. We have to create a sustainable development. We have to make sure we create no all, all reactions and drug productions takes place in aqua solvent. Therefore, enzymic, all, all this organic solvent to be replaced, atom optimized, zero atom loss, zero energy wastage, zero usage of non aqueous solvents. All this can be achieved the way enzyme achieves in our human body. So, our understanding of metabolic pathways and cellular pathways will actually help us to design tomorrow's bacteria, which will be the industrial worker. However, there's always a flip side. This flip side is it will also empower people with the wrong motive to utilize this technology and knowledge to design harmful microorganisms. We have seen how a small tiny bug could destroy the entire world's structure, society, behavior, last two years during this pandemic. I hope good wishes and good things will prevail over any evil opportunity. The society has to educate people, make them understand, and main challenge of the scientists, of genomic scientists, will be to prepare people for the future, prepare our children to educate them what is good, what is bad, and how genomics can be utilized and they can benefit of.
Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share with you some of my views on future of genomics.